Now we can see what this team can possibly be, how these pieces fit together. But when you had stuff hanging over the team the last year and change, uh, ultimately, I'm not sure they were going to be able to uh, truly fulfill whatever potential there was. And now, hopefully, it's about basketball. Winning is the ultimate deodorant in sports. If you win, the narrative changes. And that's now on the Nets' focus of what they want to do. Go win. And the headlines change very quickly. So, yeah, I I think just on a personal level, it feels very different than one year ago. Um, and certainly now uh, we'll see what uh, what this team is capable of. In my everyday travels, I get more questions about the Nets than I ever had in all my years covering the team. This is going to be my 29th year working Nets broadcasts. And I'd say the last three in particular, they're a conversation starter everywhere I go. And it plays to relevance and it plays to having high profile talent and also being in the news a lot uh, on a national level. So you know, sometimes you get in your, your bubble when you cover a team and you don't see or realize what kind of impact they're having outside of your sphere. This team creates a lot of scuttlebutt and conversation. I think the step that they'd like to take is their play on the court becomes the focal point and not just the, the quote unquote drama uh, around them. So I don't know, in sports, we, we've always learned that there's this very thin line between turmoil and triumph. People create a perception of what it's like and then the wins and losses determine the reality. So uh, for me this season, I think that's, that's really what everybody is, is now looking forward to. How do they perform? How does this team come together? This is the first time we would say that this team, a lot of people don't believe in them. A lot of people are skeptical. A lot of, um, a lot look from the outside in wondering, okay, we've had championship aspirations or expectations of you year after year, um, but it's not formulated on the floor. And I think all of these players, like coaching staff, front office, you name it, top to bottom, the organization is very well aware of that. And I think that's added a level of motivation. It's added, they, they've said it to a man about a, a chip on their shoulder. I think that's individually. I think that's collectively in being in camp. Megan can speak to this as well because she's been in watching practices. Um, there's just a good juice. There's a good energy. There's a good vibe after everything that occurred. We could talk about the circumstances. There's a really, really good feel around this team. And I think to me, that signals a sign of growth and an understanding of no matter what it looks like on paper, it comes down to how we play. And I think across the board, there's a very, very clear understanding of that in a runway of actually having an offseason, having a training camp, having a group uh, that you're implementing a lot of things on both ends of the court that, that you want. I think, to be honest, that a lot of what happened in the offseason, they've already put that in the rearview mirror. For them, it's about how can we be the best team possible and what can we do in training camp, in practices, now in the preseason. Okay, we're heading to the regular season. What pieces are we going to put together to get to that point? And as I've said, been in practices, been around the team, been around the front, you name it, and I think that's the focus for everyone. And, and I think that motivation, that push, everyone being on that edge – for this group, especially with the expectations of the last few seasons, I actually think it's a really, really positive thing for them because everyone's laid out their feelings, laid out their thoughts. And now I think there's a great deal of honesty that will help them get to that point. What pushed me into choosing Brooklyn, I think like, honestly, like Brooklyn chose me and it was like an easy yes, just because of everyone I get to work with. I mean, not just from like the team, but like Yes Network, um, you know, Ryan, Sarah, Ian, everyone's been great. And this is 
this is one of the best, you know, uh, networks to work for and like broadcast teams to work for. And so I'm excited just to like, for me to learn and grow and to take that next step. And then for, for the Brooklyn Nets, I mean, this team is like all eyes are on it. Um, you know, even though I've worked for the Grizzlies for a couple of years, I've always followed Brooklyn. I've always been a Kevin Durant fan and just like followed his career. And so it was exciting for me to kind of say yes. And so I'm excited to uh, see how this season goes and plays out. There's so many storylines that's so intriguing and interesting, but the biggest thing is like, I'm working with, I already feel like I'm working with a family that's like already embraced me. Um, so it was, you know, I keep saying yes. And that's so like cliche, I guess, but it was the easy yes uh, to make. Fans should just expect someone who loves the game of basketball, who's like a fan, just like them. I want to help tell the stories from the players from not only from what you can see on the court, but for what, for things that you can't see when all lights are on, the cameras are on, as Sarah said, we, you know, we get a chance to see practices and to share those stories. And I'm just like any other person. I'm very Southern. Um, there's a Southern accent every now and then, um, but I'm a very like people person. I'm people like, if you see me out, please say, please say hello. Um, tell me like the best places to go. I love French fries. So if anyone has like the best French fry places, I would love to like see where I can go in Brooklyn to get that. Um, so that's, that's what they should expect. It's just someone who's just down to earth and who loves a game of basketball.